Hi, I'm Stephanie Marco. Welcome. I'm so honored to have you here today. And I'm excited to jump right in to getting you unstuck. So let's talk about that. So what creates a rut? Even if you're normally a happy, motivated, and generally high energy person, it's likely that at some point in your life, you're going to find yourself in a rut. You know, this period of time where you just feel lethargic and anxious and demotivated, you feel burnt out, you don't know what to do with yourself, and you don't really feel like doing much of anything. Um, and now you're wondering to yourself, how did I get here? How do I get out of this more importantly? Um, and so I myself have certainly gone through my fair share of feeling stuck and in low periods of my life before. And so what I want to do with this masterclass is to share with you just a few of the things that have really helped me get myself unstuck. Now, before we get into it, I do want to note that if you are currently feeling more than just stuck, but rather you're having more severe internal challenges like addictions or suicidal thoughts, while many of these techniques will offer you relief, I do urge you to please see a clinical specialist and someone who has expertise in whichever area you're suffering, or to reach out to a doctor who can promote you into more urgent emotional regulation. Um, please don't be afraid to seek the support of your loved ones to guide you towards this help immediately. And I also want to offer firstly my deep compassion for all of the men and women who are in this world enduring the stuck feeling which is happening for so many on this planet right now. And we often focus on women being oppressed and disregarded and in many ways we are. Um, the feminine is treated quite unjustly in the world. Um, this world has lost touch with its divine feminine essence. And because of this, we are feeling very confused, men and women both. Uh, and since we're all so connected regardless of our gender, our diminished, degenerated states of the feminine actually impacts men just as much and in some ways more. Um, so today... In this course, I'll reference the masculine and feminine polarity. And this may be the first time you've been introduced to, introduced to this idea and this concept. But in nature, we see it all the time. We see polarity through the masculine and feminine, um, which creates balance. It creates life, um, attraction, manifestation. And the masculine, especially masculine energy man, men, uh, feel of service uh, as protectors and more women have actually moved into the masculine role for survival and equality but often as the at the expense for their other needs not being met and these traits often suppress other parts of their natural inclination to be feminine and it also makes men feel more confused as to how to be of service and appreciated in a healthy way for their masculine traits, which they've often suppressed uh, for the shame that they'll be judged or rejected. So many men also in spiritual circles have been confused and they have had these um, ideas that becoming more feminine would be a better way for them to avoid this rejection. And this is something that we'll also address um, as we work together and get to know each other and throughout this course. And so we're here to better define what masculine energy is and what masculinity, masculinity is as an energetic polarity means, not as a gender, because in Tantra, masculinity isn't defined as gender. It's, it's a polarity, a divine polarity that balances the feminine and both exist within each of us and everywhere. And so energetically speaking, the essence of the masculine is one of pure 
present. It's a vast, safe space that can contain everything. And in the tantric tradition, it's referred to as Shiva. And Shiva presence is that presence that is in the background of all manifestation. And it is holding a focus and being a witness to what is being expressed in the feminine. So this might sound a little esoteric and elusive to you, but hopefully it will become more clear throughout this discussion today. And as you start to observe yourself and think about some of these ideas and how they relate to you and what sensations come up for you in your body and thoughts that arise for you. The masculine energy is that energy that is about going out into the world and taking action. It's an energy that is penetrating. It's permeating the world. It's a force that really directs and guides the energy. And it will be the main energy in today's talk as I share with you more details of how to get unstuck and my upcoming course, The Five Elements of the Awakened Man. And using the masculine is a fantastic way to get unstuck in our lives and filtering masculine and feminine energy through these, through these elements in nature. And ladies, please stay with us because there is more for you here too. And if there's a man in your life, he can greatly benefit from you understanding these principles and potentially guiding him here. And if there isn't a man in your life, understanding these principles that are within you will really help you to come into greater balance and appreciation for this beautiful, compatible energy between a man and a woman and your masculine and feminine internally, and how both sides of ourselves really can merge. I'll also be sharing a bit about my women's course. So there's room for women and men to attend and get something great out of this. So if you've incarnated a male body, you have inside of you a attuned penetrative power. And you also penetrate with your sex, with your love. You penetrate mostly with this, in this world with your consciousness and your presence and your focus. And many men get lulled into a world of competitive sports because of this element of achieving something. The masculine is about achieving, coming to a final result, so he may return to this space of this void of pure consciousness. This is why men love to climax, because for a moment he becomes nothing, and he creates this very space, this infinite space of awareness for himself, this infinite consciousness that is the ultimate ma masculine space with nothing more to achieve. And in that moment, he's in pure awareness. He becomes pure awareness without anything. And when he comes into this, he arrives to his emptiness. And this is why men love to come home after a long day of work and not have to talk and sit in front of the TV or hopefully even better meditate and create this void of space with this feeling of completion, complete nothingness. And in that masculine place, that is where he comes to a finish line. And so let's say it's a declaration in sex, he ejaculates, and then there's this moment of feeling complete. So this is the place where you can learn to access ongoing feelings of awareness so you don't need to achieve anything to be in this place of pure awareness. This is why men also often wish to fix a woman when she's being emotional because he wants to be in this place of pure awareness and protect and provide for her. And if he can't fix her emotions, after a while a man will shut down and he'll feel useless. And these are the two common responses, but neither of them are really helpful or a true response that honors your masculine essence. And it doesn't honor her. Uh, it doesn't honor any, anything because when you're disconnected from your true essence of consciousness, you're really disconnected from the truth of your masculinity and your real power, your real source of power. So in this moment, you may have slipped into a stagnant state, uh, numbing yourself with bad habits like food or escaping with old vices. You may be feeling addicted to porn. You may be having erectile issues. You may simply feel utterly castrated and emasculated by the woman in your life or by having lost your job or your business. And you may have no idea what your life's meaning is in this moment. 
you may be being very harsh with yourself and the things you're saying to yourself or pushing yourself so hard on some days that you end up exhausted and completely depleted or hurt. Um, and so I want to take this moment to congratulate you and for you to congratulate yourself because you showed up here today with bravery and with strength to be here in this full presence of your masculine, even if it feels a bit shaky right now. And it may only be a whisper right now, but you're in the right place to turn that whisper into a raging roar. And you're welcome here in whatever state you're in, authentically and with my deepest, deepest respect. I'm here to invite you to go further now into yourself, into your empowerment. And we're going to give you some ways to do that. So thank you for this opportunity to take some of these methods to you for reigniting your passion and motivation and to take this opportunity for me to share some of my passions about this work and my five elements of the Awakened Man Beginner's Tantra course that I have launching on June 16th. And I want to start this conversation by asking you a brief question. And I encourage you to get interested and curious about what, what comes to mind, some of the answers that might come up about this question. I'd like to ask you, and for you to ask yourself, if you know what the difference is between a hero and a warrior. These are masculine archetypes that are often discussed, but not often realized. Most men really identify with being a hero because of the images they saw as boys of a hero in comic books, superheroes, um, images in culture of firefighters and policemen. And most healthy men have a beautiful and natural desire to simply want to help save the day. Truly, this is one of my most favorite qualities in a man. This impulse in a man is so endearing. It's so, it makes me feel so safe. But this, but the difference between a hero and a warrior is going to be the key to your mindset and to your awareness that's needed to step out of your rut and into your purpose. And the difference between a hero and a warrior is wisdom. So a hero will run into a burning fire without caution, without a plan. A hero doesn't know what he doesn't know. And often a hero won't possess the maturity to admit he doesn't know. A warrior, however, knows his blind spots. He studied them. He has people around him who are honest with him. And he's people around him with skills that outshine his in certain areas where he's a bit weak, especially the woman he chooses as his partner, who essentially, this woman becomes his oracle. So the woman who tests him, the woman who wants him to live up to his word, and a woman is constantly testing a man to see if she can open her heart and if she's safe to love him. As she trusts him more, she can deepen her surrender to his leadership. She can open her body to his power and allow him to pleasure her and heal her through sexuality. She can open her heart to loving herself and the world more through his presence and the safety and the space that he provides for her to do so, to express herself authentically. A hero wants to be who he says he is, wants to be what his woman sees in him, but he's still in a prince mode. He's still wavering while a warrior is committed to do what it takes to step in, to have self-respect, integrity, and to own up to his flaws and to take action to better them. He's so truthful to his word and to his mission, most importantly. He puts himself into a position to be effective by calling on his army and his team, which make him 
powerful and accountable and uplift him and support his leadership to become a king. So as we go through ways of coming out of a rut, I want to keep you to keep in mind whether you're in a mindset of a prince or in a mindset of a war, warrior, uh, if you're ready to be a king, which will require you a heightened desire for true self-initiation into the world. And in Tantra, we use nature as a great resource, as a reflection of our inner state of well-being. So in today's talk and in my upcoming course, The Five Elements of the Awakened Man, I call on the five elements in nature to guide you to alchemize all of your confusion and your limitations through these natural states of being, bringing in the fundamental healing powers of nature. They're, they're present for us at all times to come back into our awareness and our bodies and our spirits. So with that in mind, let's get into it. So the first strategy I want to talk about for getting unstuck is linked to the element of earth. And all of the five elements are contained in the earth. The earth represents the feminine, the mother, the grounding, the creative bond of nurturing. She feeds us, she's our home. And we always begin by grounding ourselves when we explore spiritual, energetic practices and powers in our bodies, when we conjure Kundalini. The earth also represents death and creating new ground. As a side note, it's a principle of Tantra that the masculine taking action without the feminine considered results as an act of violence. And so anything void of the feminine consideration is a dismissal of the sacred nature of life itself. And we'll touch more on this in my course, but essentially, Men are the upholders of justice, of protecting the planet, protecting the beauty, the innocence, the delicateness of life, and the safety for both this delicate and this fierce motherly energy of the feminine and the creativity of her feminine to be contained and protected. And when men use their purpose in this way to protect these principles of humankind, we all benefit. As a man, you may have experienced this masculine-feminine balance within yourself when you've had a big creative idea that you've wished to birth. And that creative idea that you wish to birth is a feminine desire. And you use your focus and your protection of your masculine to get the funds or the money or the resources, which is the feminine, to make it happen, which is the masculine. So you can see this is a perfect example of how the masculine and feminine energy collaborate so beautifully for manifestation. And when we can understand these principles and laws, we can play with them inside of ourselves and outside of ourselves to create a beautiful dance of harmony in the world. So using this world, this element of earth to dig in more deeply, to go beneath the surface, go beneath the depths and beyond the shallow, truly be, being inside of the world, connecting with others deeply, being effective and being in our power and our groundedness requires expressing emotionally and bonding. And it's a quality that comes quite easily to the feminine. In fact, we connected being connected with such a part of our primitive survival as feminine. In, in history, women were not hunters, so we needed to be part of a community as gatherers, um, as social beings, to share the details. And I know as a feminine energy woman, sharing the details with my girlfriends, I admit, is really a key for me and my ability to lift my spirits. It never fails to get me out of a rut. Um, and it's one of the defining characteristics of all humans, regardless of your gender, to feel deeply connected and like we belong in the world. So it's our deepest, uh, most connected relationships that challenge us and that make us go deeper and question things, that create self-reflection that's needed for us to grow and get out of ruts and to make strides. And so the main point I'm making is 
that if you're a modern man, you may not be getting these types of interactions from your normal everyday friend group, right? And it's not only men. I know for myself in my 20s, while I loved my friend group dearly, a lot of our interactions basically boiled down to partying and drinking and shopping and doing our makeup. And for men, this might look like video games and sports and your inside jokes that you've said a million times before. Um, and those kinds of interactions are really fun and a good reminder that you're in a comfort zone. And they may make you feel very safe, but they're not going to challenge you. They're not challenging. They're not inspiring. They will hold you in a loop, in a hamster wheel, and they won't give you a sense of purpose that will keep you from falling into ruts and feeling stuck. When all of your interactions on a day-to-day -day basis are pretty surface, we don't get the opportunity to be unstuck. So society has been locked away, right? For over a year now in fear and so has part of your brain. Your brain has been locked away from feeling growth and challenge. You've been in fight or flight, which eventually makes us all shut down and go into a rut where we feel stuck. This world is coming out of solitary confinement, and a lot of studies have conclusively proven that solitary confinement is really, really bad. It has bad psychological consequences that can actually cause brain damage. Um, so we can see how locking up this part of our brain and locking up our bodies denies us connection, denies us going deeper into the earth to explore the earth freely by traveling. It denies us challenges of new conversations, new people, places, and things that are going to just stimulate us and motivate us to go and to stretch your own capabilities further and how this will keep you stuck. And I'm reminded of how important exploring new parts of the earth and myself are every single time I go to do a Vipassana or a silent retreat, when I travel someplace new, or when I study with my guru, or when I chat with one of my entrepreneurial or creative friends. I always come away from these conversations and these journeys um, feeling energized and brimming with possibilities and ideas about myself and my life. And so if you find yourself in a rut, one of the best ways you can start to get yourself out of it is to seek out new types of information, new ground that you can till, new interactions with people, places, and things. We're going to challenge, who are going to challenge and inspire you. And one way you can explore this is by signing up for my five elements of the Awakened Man course, where men like you, who are all seeking uh, to be unstuck and to get more information about their spark inside and their and ideas they have inside that might wake them up a bit. Men who are seeking to upgrade their masculinity, how they show up on earth, how they do business, how they harness their sexual energy. And if you want to get the benefits of these types of deeper growth-based conversations on a regular basis, one thing you can do is to step into what I like to call a warrior brotherhood. Now, if you're the kind of person who's been reading personal development blogs or books out there and you, you listen to expert gurus and podcasts, then you're probably familiar with this term, the mastermind group. But I think that term is a bit cringy <laughs> and a bit too intellectual and mental because what we're here, what we're creating for men are bonds and community and pre-planned conversations that lead us there on topics and exercises every two weeks that are supportive with a group of men and mentors and me who are all here collaborating as your team to inspire you and who have the same curiosities and have done this same personal development, uh, sexual, personal, uh, physical development work um, together. We're pulling together uh, this thread of curiosity that we have with a group of people who we can have progress with, where we can stay mutually accountable to our goals and we can stay connected. 
And once this course is over, you will have a safe brotherhood to be in a deeper place of connection, to be supported. Uh, You'll be on a path with the support of these men. When you graduate from the Five Elements of the Awakened Man course, you'll be subscribed to my online uh, subscription platform, A Love Revolution, where you'll be encouraged to come together with your brothers and with your sisters doing the same work. And we will make time each week to stay connected, to continue to practice, to have passionate and enlightening conversations. So I'm very excited to be able to introduce this idea, this community to you, and to move you into a new space of being. And so the next element we're going to discuss is air. And air is sort of this intangible force, right? It swirls around us. It can lift us up. It can knock us down. It can suffocate us with its absence. And in Tantra and Ayurveda, we refer to unseen energetic challenges, ch- channels in the body, which act in similar ways as air, as the nadis. And there are, seven, there are said to be 72,000 nadis, or energetic body channels, within us. And the three main channels uh, of nadis in the areas of our breath and that are responsible for balancing um, our brain are the ida, the pingala, and the shushumna, which are these left and right and central channels nadis of nadis. And we'll learn much more about the power of these if you stay till the end of the class, where I'll do a brief pranayama uh, breathwork session with you. And so this leads me to how it's been proven that how we think actually changes the structure and function of our brains. It's been proven we can change our biology by changing how we think. And this is really essential groundwork for understanding how principles and practices of Tantra create new neurological shifts in the brain. So we know the nervous system is designed to orchestrate all processes of the body, not just thinking, not just behavior. And I'm a big fan of Dr. Dr. Andrew Huberman. Um, And the way he explains this is the nervous system of humans is designed to extract physical phenomenon from the, from the universe that are non-negotiable photons of light. So in other words, I can't see infrared light with my eyes. I can't see ultraviolet light with my eyes. I can't perceive that because I don't have the receptors for that, right? And we know other animals can perceive some of those things because they do have the receptors. But that leads us to the next thing, which is perception. Perception is which sensations we are paying attention to. So all the time we're sensing things, right? Like right now, your feet are sensing your contact with your shoes or your socks or the surface under them. And you were not thinking about that until I said it. (laughs) And that's when you shift perception. So while we can't always shift our environment, our perception is negotiable. We can control our perception, which is extremely important because I just said shoes and you thought about your feet and there you were. And there are feelings as well, which can be a bit more nebulous, but feelings are a link between our emotions, a physical sensation generally in the body that is then collaborated with a story or a judgment in our mind about those sensations and feelings mean about ourselves or about the situation we're in. And that's really what emotions are. And then there are thoughts. And thoughts are also interesting because thoughts can happen spontaneously, like a web browser that just pops up on the screen. And thoughts can also be observed and deliberate. Um, So we can have a thought, like in meditation, where we decide that thought isn't going to lead us down the road with it, that we're going to shift our thought elsewhere. 
and inviting maybe our breath in, for instance. Or we can be more overtly deliberate with a thought. And we can decide right now what our plan for tomorrow is, for instance. So thoughts can happen spontaneously. They can be detached from and observed. And they can also be deliberate. And my point in all this is when we can bring a deeper awareness to our thoughts and how they affect our emotions and our behaviors based on our perceptions and beliefs that we have about them, we can shift those perceptions and beliefs to create new, more desirable thoughts and therefore more desirable states of being and more desirable results and lives. And there are two ideas in psychology that have been proven wrong. The first one is that when we hit adulthood, our brains don't really change that much. And the second one is that someone may have depression and it's caused by a chemical imbalance in the brain and that the only way to treat that is through medication. And that someone else might have depression, which is caused by choices they make, and the only way to treat that is by making them change their behaviors. So newer research is actually showing that while our brain chemistry does impact how we think and how we feel, how we think and how we feel actually impacts our brain chemistry and changes it. So how we think and how we feel has the power to change our chemistry at any age. This gives us so much more power and influence over our lives. And this term is referred to as neuroplasticity. And, which is, and neuroplasticity has shown us that our brains can continue to change and continue to grow and develop for our entire lives. And our brains are moldable and shapeable and changeable throughout our entire life, not only when we're young. It's also become more and more evident that the way we think impacts our biology. So if we consistently think hopeless thoughts, then we are more likely to have a biology of depression. We're training our brain for this. We, are, we might have a chemical imbalance like lower uh, serotonin or dopamine when we have these thoughts. And in people who are experiencing depression, uh, this part of the brain co called the hippocampus is measured and is shown to be smaller. And when these people attended a few weeks of shifting their thoughts through therapy and other self-supportive practices, um, after those practices, their hippocampus was measured and shown to become larger. So it actually changed its size based on shifting thoughts. How we think also changes our neural pathways. They are like these little channels, like roads, and the ones we use the most become broad, like highways. And the ones that are rarely used become very narrow and thin. And we don't use them at all. They get trimmed off, and the brain loves efficiency, so they just no longer exist. So when we think about our negative thoughts, and like we're hopeless, and like we're no good, nobody likes me. These pathways become thicker and thicker, and the brain immediately goes there. The brain attached to this, attaches to this belief system to everything happening in our external world. We become habitual in thinking negative thoughts about ourselves about, and about life. We become neurotic. We don't feel like ourselves. We're always wondering if people like us, if we've done a good job, if we're deserving of love. Okay, and that shows up in our biology also as pain and as erectile dysfunction, as other chronic gut issues. Um, but when we change how we think and we start thinking hopeful thoughts, like, yeah, I can do something hard. I can step up to a challenge. I can reach out and I can love another person and they're going to respond and love me back because I'm lovable. And I'm worthy, right? When we think about why we have certain beliefs and we begin to dismantle the ones that aren't working for us. New neural pathways become broader and wider and they become the way we think. Those physical structures change and so do our lives and so do our bodies. 
So while I'm still on my science kick, um, let's also talk a bit briefly about our genes. Now we know there's a genetic aspect to mental health and mental illness. So depression tends to run in families. So does anxiety for many people. And this feels like we're predestined to feel this way for some people. In Tantra, we may call this karma. And um, there's some research that's coming out that's really exciting that is showing that we have the ability to influence which of our genes gets turned on and which of our genes gets passed on to our descendants based on the experiences we have. Healing our ancestral wounds, as spiritualists might call it, and science would describe it as epigenetics. And so how we respond to our experiences, how we think can impact the genes and which ones get turned on and which ones get turned off. And this emerging field of epigenetics gives us more of a degree of influence over a very impactful part of our mental health, health our genes. So therapy isn't the only way to change our thinking. It's just one of the ways. And it has, one of, it has some of the most research behind it. But yogic practices and energy work and meditation are gaining so much scientific momentum through, sci through studies proving these methods of healing. And we know they work because it not only changes how we think, it changes the biology in our brains. And one of the most effective ways to change our thinking through Tantra, utilizing air, is utilizing the breath or pranayama, which has been scientifically proven to shift our thoughts. In these studies, participants were shown various emotionally tri triggering images uh, as scenes on a screen, and their breath and breathing patterns were measured and recorded for each emotional trigger. They found when they removed the external visual and only reenacted the breathing pattern associated with the emotion, the same emotion was conjured very quickly through the breath. So the breath and how deeply and rapidly, how rhythmically we breathe, how we hold the breath, alternate nostrils, visually redirect it, all of these things can improve our brain function, our thoughts, our emotional states, and our sexual sensitivity in really dramatic ways. And again, if this interests you, please stay until the end of this masterclass when I will take you through a very simple and effective breath exercise that's been proven to balance the hemispheres of the left and right sides of the brain. So the next element I wish to discuss with you is that of water. Water, so powerfully transformative element. It's, um, it makes up 70 to 80% of our body. We rely on water for our health, for growing life on the planet, for cleansing ourselves, purifying, relaxing, refreshing ourselves into a new state after we take a shower or go for a swim. Um, we often refer to a state of flow as water, as being a desirable state, a state that we wish to achieve. And so I want to encourage you on a very basic level to start to increase your water intake, to have purified water and mineral water is a big part of your diet, investing in a filtration system or a delivery service of glass bottled water, not plastic. Um, plastic is really polluting our planet and can create a lot of toxicity in the body. Plastic water has been linked to causing cancer and premature aging in us. So I want to encourage water as a beautiful way for you to get out of a rut. And beyond this, I want to talk about the Ayurvedic practice of cold therapy showers. Your morning shower helps you wake up. It helps your body and mind come to life. And it's one of the best ways to get unstuck. And when we integrate an Ayurvedic shower practice of cold water therapy, you will really start to see changes. And you can start this slowly by splashing cold water on your face or certain areas of your body and massaging them. And if you're really hardcore, you can turn this into a contrast shower practice that alternates hot and cold water. Um, 
So we go from very hot water to freezing cold water. Um, and contrast showers can boost your mental, emotional, um, your circulation, support your immune system, uh, bring you into a greater state, uh, reducing inflammation in the body, aiding muscle recovery. It really increases your mood and your energy. Um, so uh, also contrast showers support detoxification and they promote lymphatic drainage. Uh, since cold water contracts your blood and your, your lymph nodes, it activates your uh, parasympathetic nervous system, which really helps to support detoxification. And to try it, you can just alternate. Go into it slowly, doing maybe three minutes of hot water and one minute of cold. Um, and build yourself up to about 10 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever feels comfortable, whatever you can handle. Um, and when you do this practice daily, it will really start to make a difference for you. Water is linked to the feminine and to the moon and to the flow of a woman's sexual energy in Tantra. And that brings me to the next element of akasha. Akasha is the Sanskrit word meaning ether, both in its elemental and its metaphysical sense. Ether, or infinite space, brings us back to this masculine state, this state of awareness, the vast infinite space of awareness above us in the ether. And we sometimes refer to this as the masculine energy of the father energy. So the father energy above and the mother energy below in the earth. And in this state, we can move ourselves into higher planes of consciousness through mediums of yoga and meditation, uh, with, which aren't actually meant to be physical practices. Yoga was, was marketed as, as a fitness practice, but at, their, at its core, it's meant to bring us into a loving space of letting go, into a mindfulness, into uh, a deep meditative state of seeing things from a different point of view, of changing our perspective quite literally. And practices like Vipassana as well, silent retreats where we don't speak and we observe ourselves in prolonged periods of silence uh, while walking in, in walking meditations and sitting in meditation. Uh, this is another great way of exploring the ether and the awareness in ourselves. We can also do this through fasting, which is so powerful because we start to realize how much eating is a form of entertainment and a way of emotionally supporting us and distracting us from some things that may be wanting to come up. So when we remove food and eating, we allow these feelings to come up to the surface, some of our primitive urges to be recognized, and it allows our digestive system to cleanse and to detoxify. So this whisper inside of us can be felt and healed and and comes out of being dormant. Clearing distractions in this ether state is so necessary to bring us into our infinite consciousness. The practices I've mentioned here in ether will help you get back to your true self, will help clear a path. It's about clearing. Maybe you just do this for a day. Maybe you fast one day a week. Maybe you try three days fasting, uh, can be done in such a beautifully healthy way. Letting our digestive system rest is a very beautiful and healthful thing. You can also practice mindfulness, mindfulness where you move more subtly and, and, and slowly, observing your motivations and your movements and your thoughts in a very intentional way, with a gentleness and with a compassion for yourself to create more clarity, to create more space. And this brings us back to purity and to an innocence that we had in childhood when we lived more simply. This helps us listen to the true, pure voice in ourselves and to listen to the world as a key to find our excitement and what really turns us on and inspires us to be more adventurous in life again. And so fire is the next element. And we're going to talk about this flame of fire, this exciting one, as it's associated with masculinity and sexuality and our lower chakras, our survival, eating, security, money, 
sexual creativity, making an impact in the world, taking action. This is all part of our fire. And this is also linked to our heart center, our heart's desire. And did you know that the heart possesses an intelligence all its own? It's true. It does. And it's an intelligence that is so powerful that it directly affects both our emotional and our physical health. There are over 40,000 neurons found in our heart, and this is the same number as in our brain. But the heart's electric magnetic field is actually 5,000 times stronger than the brain's electromagnetic field. 50% of the heart cells are neurons, neural, and they form their own neural network, which is commonly referred to as the intelligence of the heart. It's pretty amazing, right? And it's almost as if our heart is like another brain. And it is. It has its own energy. You can create from this space within yourself. And doctors at the Heart Math Institute have delved deeper into this intelligence of the human heart and the power of its electromagnetic field. And the results of their study are astounding, really. Um, they discovered that the electromagnetic field of the heart envelops our entire body and extends out in all directions. This field was measured up to several feet outside of our bodies. And this research uh, shows that as you consciously focus on feeling positive emotion, it has positive effects on your health and your well-being. On top of this, as your heart sends intuitive signals, including feelings of love and happiness and care and appreciation to your body and sends them out to everyone around you, those nearby, when these positive emotions are conjured by you, not only change the pattern of activity in your nervous system, they also reduce stress and boost your immune system. And when you're out in public and you're feeling this feeling from your heart, you will actually quite literally change your reality. This is where real creation starts. So how does it feel when you know you have such a powerful force within you? How have you been using it? How, how do you want to use it? It's your choice what you do with this power. And so we can stay stuck in our minds or we can let go of the noise, of the thoughts that keep us in our minds and harness instead this power of our heart intelligence by opening up, opening up our hearts, uh, focusing on emitting positive messages that you'll not only benefit from, but you'll impact everyone around you with this. It's been proven. You'll be harnessing the greatest tool of creativity for what you desire the most through this power of the heart. And when a person's power is out, this can feel like the most heartbreaking reality to live in. We get stuck in a rut. And I hear many men begin to have this idea about themselves that it's hopeless. And they're beautiful men, but they feel trapped in this limiting belief system and in these belief systems that their brains have been trained into by closing their heart and having a dysregulation of the fire of the sexual energy. Many men have been abused sexually. They have shame about this that they do not share. Many men are not able to achieve erections because of physical, emotional, psychological, spiritual burnout. Um, many have done damage to their bodies um, and to their uh, sexual perception, their thoughts, with masturbation, uh, compulsive porn watch usage and watching, and to the point where a real woman may even feel foreign to this man and, and they may be intimidated. And some men tell me that women don't even look at them. They don't even notice me. And when they do, I don't really feel confident that I can satisfy them. Um, I'm not confident around women, they say. Um, they feel that nothing can be done for them in this way. And for this, I say, no, anything is possible with your focus and with your commitment to turning it around. It simply can change very quickly. 
and this part of your heart has not been erased. It's been broken and you can be committed to healing it, to opening it back up, to shifting it in a very safe way, to re-experience the fullness of your sexual energy, of your purpose, and to conjure the earth the openness of your heart so you can feel things again you can feel a full body orgasm for instance and yes men can achieve this just as much as women can the healing and changing perception is the way out it's the way up and the way in and myself and my guest speakers in the five elements of the awakened man course will help you tremendously with these issues by opening your heart with certain exercises reflections and it will create a new reverence for yourself and your body. And your penis is a pillar of power that expresses your heart and penetrates the world and penetrates a woman's heart. And maybe you feel like, oh, you know what? I'm okay. I'm good, right? I Sex is good the way it is. I don't need to change. Maybe I don't need help. And yeah, you know, if you continue, your life will be fine. It will be normal. It will be okay. It will be normal. Um, and you'll be fine. It will be lukewarm. But you didn't show up here today because you want a normal, lukewarm life. I certainly hope not. Um, we all want an extraordinary life, a life full of magic, life force, empowerment, one that's full of beauty and confidence and adventure, one where you feel like you're in a state of trust and happiness and putting out your best self in the world and you're on a journey that you're free to be exactly who you are and if that's what you want and you, then you know that it's going to take a commitment to a few new practices and one of the practices that I talk about in this fire element is semen retention achieving uh, mastery of your ejaculation is something I really recommend to all men. And it's not that you should never ejaculate because for some men, when I mention this, it's like, what are you talking about? No, <laughs> this is my pleasure. Are you going to take away my pleasure? Um, and no, I would never do that. I have good news for you. Um, but I have to mention this because this is the key way to enhance your energy. It creates really huge shifts in a man's sense of well-being. And when you master your ejaculation, it doesn't mean you stop ejaculating forever. Uh, although there are teachers who say this, I'm not one of them. I say you just need to choose when you ejaculate, when it's right for you. And when you can do it in a sacred way, in a special way, you do it as an offering because this sperm is life force. One tablespoon of it contains billions of cells and life force energy, the, the potential to create millions and millions of life. And so tantrics, Taoist tantrics actually say, uh, one drop of semen is equal to 10,000 drops of blood. This is your sperm, this is what it holds. So when you're spilling it, like it's nothing, you're really wasting your, li your life force. When you do it with mindfulness, however, you really, bring in so much energy into your body. And for some men, holding ejaculation or ejaculating, is it's once a month, once a year, once a week. But as long as you, you're practicing, practicing this with consciousness, you will start to really feel how good it is to not ejaculate. Some men get to a point where they just don't do it anymore, naturally. There's lots and lots of men who are just blossoming through this practice. So when you're not doing it compulsively, you have a beautiful awareness and a beautiful sense of energy that grows inside of you. And I promise when you master ejaculation, you do not lose orgasm. It's a myth. On the contrary, your orgasms become much, much stronger than what you could have ever imagined. Just take some practice. Non-ejaculation takes practice. I'm not going to lie. But when you go there, when you get there, wow, it's a completely different story. And some of the older men I know who've been doing this for a while, who have mastered their ejaculation, always tell me they never go back. So when you join the five elements of the Awakened Man course today, you will receive my Anatomy of the Orgasm book, which shows all of the various types of orgasms 
that are possible for men and women and how to practice them. So now I'd like to take this opportunity to answer your questions about my upcoming, about my upcoming course. So uh, if you have some, please um, let me know. I can answer questions about Tantra, about myself. The first question I see is, do I have to have a partner to practice Tantra? This is a very good question. It's a very common question. And no, you do not. In fact, I actually encourage new students of Tantra to practice alone for a while. Um, even if clients come to me as a couple, I give them mostly separate solo exercises as homework. And this is because it takes time to culture our bodies and to get into a deep intimacy with ourselves, and where our blocks are, and to circulate this energy safely, uh, to take sexual energy and transform it into orgasmic energy. We need practice for this, and uh, we need to achieve this with ourselves before we can achieve it with another. And so this will be very impactful if you aren't in partnership. Uh, being single or in a partnership, is going to be perfect for you when venturing into tantric practices. So the next question is where and how and why did tantra originate and is it a religion? So tantra is here um, because we need more love on this planet and um, tantra dates back more than 7,000 years ago at least as it can be proven and it emerged as a spiritual yoga practice in India uh, sages of this practice were both Hindu and Buddhist, and they presented this body of teachings as the Vedas, what we call the Vedas, the Supreme Consciousness. Um, and so the Vedas use sexual union as a metaphor for weaving together the physical, emotional, spiritual, and sexual characteristics as what create one divine human being. So all of this together creates the divinity of a human. And so that's Tantra and its origination. And I will expand on that as we get to know each other. Um, so let me see another question. Does practicing Tantra require a polyamorous lifestyle? That's a great question. So Tantra is above all a personal path towards a deeper perception that nothing is separated, that everything is consciousness of energy, okay? And Neo-Tantra. Uh, Neo-Tantra is a new age form of Tantra. It is a departure from traditional Tantra, and it ar arose in the 60s, and it gives more focus to sexual freedom. And this is a great thing when one considers the ambient neuroses about sexuality in our societies. But it can also be a bit harmful when it's used as a way to bypass or to avoid behavior or to not deal with our own self-growth uh, and to cover and distract from some of the more painful work of having intimacy with ourselves. And it does this through ex external promiscuity and validation seeking from others. And many times tantric doctrine is used to justify behaviors that are objectifications of people and of, um, and of others. And they, these aren't sacred. And so polyamory is a choice and it's a certain freedom. And freedom is a fundamental value in tantra. So my path to freedom will be different from your path to freedom. And Tantra honors all paths. So you can be monogamous or you can be polyamorous. Um, and there is not a pushing of any agenda in this sense. So let me find another question. I hope that makes sense. So I, I think we're looking for a little more clarity on Neo-Tantra here, uh, which, yeah, okay, um, I'll be more specific. Yes, um, Neo-Tantra, as I said, it originated in the 60s, and it focuses more on sex and uh, a quest for better sexuality and relationship communication, essentially. And... 
um, this is a misunderstanding and also uh, a marketing tool that can sometimes be used and called Tantra and it excludes many other aspects of Tantra. Um, it describes a compulsory uh, kind of, you know, ritualized sexual um, enlightenment that happens. And, and Tantra isn't just about sex. It, it can be achieved through meditation. It can be achieved through yoga. It can be achieved by breathing in and out deeply. So, so our teachings aren't used. Uh, our, our teaching shouldn't be used to justify any way or any per perfect way of being sexually. Um, a tantric is a free individual. We are free from the very moment that they renounce classifying themselves as being labeled. So tantrics uh, are not into labels. Um, it's not a religion either in, in that sense. Anyone can be a tantric regardless of your religious background. Um, it's a way of being, it's a way of living, it's a way of thinking about life uh, with ourselves, with others, with nature itself. So I hope that that clarifies. Thank you for that. I want to thank you for your fantastic questions, for allowing me to share this wisdom of the five elements, uh, which will be part of our bigger course for men. Um, and I'll answer all of your questions if they haven't been answered in follow-up emails, so don't worry. Um, and I want to just call you now into your body and to just feel what has been sparked inside of you. And if you're curious about being part of a brotherhood or uh, an inspiring brotherhood and myself who are here to support your growth, if you're feeling this glimmer, I really want you to not hold yourself back. You might not get this chance again. And now is your time to take action. Um, it's a live online course. The five elements of the awakened man, mean, meaning we will meet every other week online over the course of uh, six classes within a 12-week period. So over three months, we will meet every other week. Um, and together, we will create a virtual brotherhood as a practice of these methods to invoke the awakening warrior that you are now rising into, that you've started to sense stirring inside of you as we've been sitting here together. And not only will you have your brothers, but you will have six male mentors teaching with me and offering their expertise and their stories of overcoming many of these issues facing men today with the very techniques that I've listed here and so many more. And you can go to our, our website, A Love Revolution, uh, to read more about these men and get an update of who they are. You can read about our six course modules. And the most amazing part is that we are going to create an online subscription-based community after this course for both men and women to begin doing this work together. So I'm really excited about that. After you graduate from the five elements of the Awakened Man course, you will be invited into this community and supported weekly by exercises and videos on a weekly basis that will keep you engaged with your men and with the work you've been doing. And in September, we will launch the five elements of the Awakened Goddess course. And here we will invite women into uh, our circle, women in your life, uh, and for men who are single, women who are single as well, who are interested in this work. So whether you're interested uh, in meeting new people or you have a woman in your life, you will have divinely feminine women around you who are committed to self-love and, and who are interested in being in community with men like you. So what are you waiting for? This is our time, guys. When you sign up for this course, you'll get over 20 hours of classes. You will get weekly tools that you can practice alone or with your partner. You will be paired with a brother. Uh, and your brother will change every two weeks. And you guys will be in touch in our two-week periods uh, between classes to get acquainted and to talk about this work and to get to get some help in your life. You'll get workbooks, you'll get meditations, you will get free gifts from our sponsors if you sign up today. And some additional bonuses if you sign up today are that you will get uh, your first buddy, brother, um, uh, two weeks before you sign up. 
sorry, two weeks before the course goes live, you will get your brother assignment. And if you sign up today, you will be able to review immediately videos and exercises that are fundamentals of this course. So you'll be able to start to practice in the weeks uh, before this course to really start to master some of these exercises using the breath and knowing that the breath is a huge part of your ability to circulate your energy and to revitalize your your masculine energy i do recommend you starting to work with these practices as soon as possible as soon as you sign up you will also be given a guided audio meditation, uh, actually a number of them in this course. You will receive email notifications with your practices each week in your home study. And uh, a minimum of four meditations will be available to you in this, into this course. And many more will come through this course as you subscribe to A Love Revolution. And in a love revolution, as a founding member of the five elements of the Awakened Man course, you will be a founder and have VIP access to this membership. So you will get an introductory price for founding members only. This price will never go up for you. The price is $33 a month, and this price will not be available to any new members again. The price will go up after the first initiation. You will also receive free gifts if you sign up by May 20th, free promotional products in the mail from our sponsors, some products that I believe in greatly. If you sign up by May 20th only, you will get some free gifts in the mail and be guaranteed samples of products. You will also receive in this, this course the anatomy of the orgasm workbook that I've created to detail for you practices that will detail all of the orgasms and ways to get there with yourself and your partner. You will also receive a Taoist men's sexuality guide, which will walk you through safe practices for semen retention, circulating energy and bringing vitality into the body and invigorate you for high performance without burnout. You'll also receive a Kundalini practice workbook for balancing your breath, changing your sexual energy instantly, opening up your heart and through um, bringing your desires through the heart, moving your energy through Kriya practices and meditations, which are slightly different than the Taoist methods, so that you have a wealth and a toolbox of information and practices for you to experiment with and see what works best for you. You will have a lifetime community to a secret platform just for us through a love revolution. We will have a secret group, which uh, will allow us to just exist together in private and confidentiality where no one will see who the members are except for the members or that we even exist so that we can support it in this way together. You will also, when you sign up today, you'll receive a PDF of the alchemy uh, of sexuality by Nick Douglas, which was given to me by my guru. Um, and you will receive this, this PDF if you sign up by May 30th. You will also receive a PDF of The Way of the Superior Man by David Data, which is an incredible book that talks a lot about harnessing masculine energy. Um, another free gift from me to you. Um, and in this course, you will have access to Q&As and personal contact with highly sought after male experts in the, in the in the areas of Tantra, in the areas of Qigong, shadow work, brotherhood, emotional regulation, addiction, um, relationship recovery, communication, sexual wellness, nutrition, manifestation, so many things that these guys are doing in the world. And they are experts who each charge between $200 to $500 hourly for coaching. And they will be available each week for one and a half hours to two hours in every one of our classes. And there's so much more that comes with this. So what could possibly be holding you back? Um, and if it's time, You'll make the time for what's important. You have every other week with a lot of time for integration. Uh, and this world needs you. And women need you. And men need you. And your best self needs you. And needs you to show up as this warrior you're becoming. And when you step into your power, you rise. You rise into a king. And you graduate and initiate yourself as a man and into what you're truly here to be, what you're here to give, and what you're truly here to experience, which is joy.
and love. Life is about joy and love and expansion. It is not about being stuck. It's not about suffering and being complacent. It's not about being on a hamster wheel with a predicted life. Um, so don't hold yourself back for any reason. Don't hold your back from ex yourself back from experiencing this incredible course, experiencing the ecstatic life that you deserve. And if finances are an issue, please contact us. Um, and so by signing up on this webinar, you're going to get uh, a deep discount. The things I mentioned uh, in the totality of this course, if we broke it down, uh, item line by item line would be about $5,000. And that's not what I'm going to charge you today. Um, my private clients pay in upwards of this, but that's not what we're going to charge you. Um, we're going to bring you an opportunity to step into your power in an affordable way with a group of men and to access these principles I share. And so um, I invite you to check out the, the prices and the savings that's available to you here. And while you start to ponder this, I'm going to take the opportunity to now invite you into the pranayama exercise that I promised to share with you at the end of this course. So I invite you, if you'd like to stick around and to continue to see what's going to be offered, uh, to also enjoy this offering of our breath. And so when you do this every day, especially in the morning, you'll really be able to bring yourself into a state of balance. I practice this every day. So we can just start by finding ourselves in a comfortable position. You can sit cross-legged with a straight spine. You can sit in a chair, just straightening your spine now. Opening your chest, opening your heart. And begin to deepen your breath, filling the belly with air, like a balloon like you're inflating a balloon with air. And opening the belly to expand and to sip in a bit more air as you're comfortable, slowly coming into your breath, filling the belly, the lower chest, the upper chest, all the way up to the collarbones in the full capacity of your lungs, inhaling. And exhaling through the nose and pulling the belly back towards the spine. And take another deep inhale, this time filling yourself with more precious oxygen into the belly, opening yourself into the lower chest and the heart space, moving up into the upper chest, all the way to the collarbone, the full capacity of your air. And as you exhale, allowing the belly to gently glide back towards the spine, releasing and deflating this balloon of air. And I invite you to take your pointer finger and middle finger and place them on your forehead, the, the pointer finger and middle finger of the right hand. And you'll use your thumb to hold your right nostril and your pinky and middle and ring finger rather to hold your left nostril. And whenever we begin a pranayama or alternate nostril breathing, which is what we're going to do, we hold the right nostril with the thumb and we exhale all of the air out of the left nostril. And begin emptying the left nostril slowly and gently. And I invite you to inhale very slowly and gently, slowly as you can, through the left nostril. And bringing the air in through the left nostril as deeply as you can and holding it at the top for a few seconds with the right nostril closed by the thumb. And when you've completed taking this full inhale, I want you to close the left nostril and exhale through the right nostril.
again slowly and gently exhaling taking your time and when you've completed the exhale you're going to take an inhale through the right nostril slowly and gently all the way to the top going very deeply feeling the capacity of your lungs holding the breath at the top for just a few seconds continuing to sip in just a few more sips of air and then you're going to hold the right nostril with the thumb and exhale out of the left and this is called Nadi Shodhana breath this breath balances the left and right hemispheres and you can continue going in this cycle with another round in through the left and X through the right, all the way to the top, inhaling slowly and gently, and inhaling through the right nostril, and exhaling through the left nostril when you're ready at your own pace. Continuing, inhaling through the right nostril, exhaling through the left nostril, inhaling through the left nostril, exhaling through the right. And sensing the deepness in your body and I encourage you to continue this breath as long as you like while I talk and to bring yourself into this state of receptivity this Nadi Shodhana breath inhaling left exhaling right inhaling right and exhaling left doing this balances the hemispheres of the brain and if you do it about five in about five rounds per day, you'll come afterwards when you bring yourself to completion, noticing a nice shift. And you can relax your hands down and breathe normally now through both nostrils, sensing any shifts, taking a few recovery breaths through both nostrils. And when you're ready, coming back into the position, for a Surya Vidana breath, which is our solar energy. This is our masculine breath. And so for this breath, we're going to again exhale all of the air out of the left nostril to begin. And we're going to inhale right, closing the left nostril, and exhale left. Inhaling right, and exhaling left. And you'll start to witness this vastness of the masculine, sensing this energy of breathing through the right and exhaling through the left, filtering the masculine through the feminine. The masculine side is our right side, the feminine side is our left. And conjuring this masculine energy through Surya Bandhana breath, you're able to focus on your commitments as a man, your focus, your ability to hold presence and space, inhaling right, exhaling left. I encourage you to take one more round of this breath now and then return yourself to a neutral breath with your hands in your lap, breathing through both nostrils for a few moments. Eyes are closed and you can sense any shifts in your body. And when you're ready, bringing your hands back into position for the final exhalation out of the left nostril, where we will inhale left, slowly and deeply, and exhale left. So keeping the right nostril closed, we are inhaling left and exhaling left. This is Chandra Vedana, where we breathe through just one nostril, and this is going to activate our feminine side our lunar energy, our moon energy, our water, our ability to flow, receive. It's a very calming breath, breath of receptivity, the energy of nurturing and healing, resting, recuperating. 
So really allowing yourself to fall into this beautiful left side, which conjures the right side of our brain of creativity. So we gently inhale left and exhale left. Allowing yourself to receive this gift of this moment, this gift of brotherhood in my upcoming course, this gift of time with yourself, to really open up to what it is you truly want and not to other others' expectations of yourself, but to your own expectations to your, of yourself and your own interests. Listening to yourself without judgment, following that little call, that little desire, that little whisper of your creativity is there for a reason. It's pointing you in that direction and taking one more round of breath in through the left and out. If you haven't, uh, come to a resting position yet, you can. Coming to a neutral position with your breath and allowing yourself to feel any shifts. And asking yourself if you feel differently now than when you first sat down to watch this master class. And how this past hour has impacted you And I invite you to listen to your heart and to bring yourself into whatever you feel is the best way forward. And I welcome you into our circle. And I'm so honored to have you here. And I'm, I know you're showing up here today because it means that you're someone who is committed to holding presence that will be powerful to the other men in our group and that you will also be able to receive from the other men and from this course all of the gems that it has to offer you. So thank you for joining us today. And I'm wishing you well. And if you have questions, please go to alovevolution.com. And I look forward to seeing you in our five elements of the Awakened Man course. Thank you. Satnam. And namaste. Thank you.